Hi, I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland. Thank you for joining us today. We're at the Flash Memory Summit 2016 in Santa Clara, California. One of the more unique flash products on the market is the flash module drive by Hitachi. We've never really taken the time to do a deep dive on that, so I've invited them to come in and explain how this technology works and how it's different than just short of your off-the-shelf SSD. To help with that conversation, I've invited Matt Pujot. He is with Hitachi. Matt, what do you do? I'm Director of Flash Technologies Product Management. Okay. And so... You have, like, I guess, a diagram here of the flash module drive. Right. So, so it's, it's obviously more than just an SSD. It right? is. It is. So this is the core of our flash module drive. We call it the FMD. Okay. And kind of the way we got down this path of building our own technology was early in the USPV days, um, we, we implemented SSDs, and that was early in the life of F SSD technology, and it really it didn't meet our requirements for reliability and quality and lifetime and so we said you know we it's really not that difficult to build it there's some unique technology you have to put in it but we figured we could do it ourselves okay. and do it in a, in a yeah, much yeah. better way in a way that would actually play with our array controllers okay. so that's kind of the key to this thing okay. at the heart of this is this ASIC that we had uh, custom designed Hitachi designed it with one of the, the large merchant uh, ASIC manufacturers okay. and at the heart of it is this this four core ARM9 processor complex and okay. so that at the time and even today that allows us to have pretty much more processing power than any other flash controller on the market today okay. Um, to interface to the to the host, and in our case, our our VSP array controller okay. is this uh, SAS interface, and so this is 12 gig SAS, and it's actually uh, unique in that a, a normal standard SAS uh, drive has only two SAS lanes going upstream to the host. Right. In our case, we built a two by wide port on the A side and the B side. So that gives us twice the amount of bandwidth into this device. Right. And that's per module, right? That's per that is per FMD. Right. And so in a you know in a in a, in a normal you know uh, a, a standard array configuration you probably you know you'd build these out in in uh, parity groups of maybe RAID 5 7 plus 1 or RAID 6 uh, uh, 6 plus 2. Okay. And in a normal customer might have you know 50 or 100 of these right. so we're reproducing this processing power in this interface many bandwidth times over. many times over okay right. so then I, I also know you have hardware compression right. here as well and this is in our our, our second generation device which okay. we've been shipping since about October of last year okay and in here is an LZH hardware based compression engine okay it's in the IO path and it has it, from our first generation to our second generation, there's actually no performance impact of this hardware compression in it. Okay. Um, and then interfacing to the actual NAND flash down here, you know, you have many up to, I think it's 128 uh, NAND chips okay. in, a, in a normal FMD, um, is redundant flash controllers okay. to drive the the on fee interface to, to drive the actual NAND flash okay. and so we've we built out 16 of those most other implementations I've seen are about maybe eight is the max right so a lot a lot more there. a lot more yeah. in there and then each one of these is actually has two inner uh, two paths to to NAND flash so it's 32 redundant paths and with this multiprocessor architecture and the parallel interface to NAND flash, we don't really hit a right cliff. Our right cliff is more like a right hump. Okay. <laughs> um, so that, and then, so a right cliff, just so people know, is, is when a drive is just getting flooded with right I.O., the yeah. time for the flash to catch up with all that right traffic actually causes some latency and delays performance. Well, yeah, so, so what happens in, in out there in the wild is you, you fill your drive with data, and because this is, you know, the tier one of your, your right. tiering architecture, you're going to keep these guys full all the time. Right. When those things get full, there's less over-provisioning space to do things like uh, uh, collect uh, um, invalid LV, uh, pages to right. collect it into blocks to do the erasing and all that stuff. And so one of the things we're able to do with this multiprocessor architecture is actually partition the workload so you know it, you can kind of think of it as essentially one of the cores is up here handling host I.O. traffic just talking to the host. One right. of the cores is driving the I.O. path 
from the, the host traffic down into the NAND flash, and then we can have another core out here managing garbage collection and background okay. activities. And so with this parallel architecture, we can be processing host IOs down in this part and then also doing garbage collection off over here so that we can be ready for those new write IOs when so they So the come. net result is uh, really very consistent performance, Absolutely. not only high performance, consistent, so, predictable. You maybe. know, uh, the one of the, the, the cornerstones of the Hitachi brand is high performance. Mm -hmm. And when we build something, it's going to be high performance. You can right. pretty much count on that. And so what we see, and, and th this is something we hear from our customers when they do a, a, a bake-off against other all-flash array implementations, is that over a wide range of I.O. IOPS ranges, you right. know, from zero to 500,000 IOPS, for instance, we can consistently uh, produce less than a millisecond I.O. response times for that over a very wide range and, and over the life of the product because as these as flash devices age um, the controller has to do more more uh, um, housekeeping and, right. and garbage collection and whatnot and wear leveling so we're able to manage that as well right so one last thing I, before we wrap up here I want to talk about this hardware compression on the uh, module because that's that's fairly unique as yeah. well and so what and again we're going back to a, an environment might have 50 or 100 flash of these flash modules and so basically all that uh, data efficiency is not impacting storage controller performance or CPU right. performance or anything right it's all offloaded onto the individual drives right 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 that's right and, and how we manage it is up in the array controller with our HDP product our pooling product yes and HDP allows you to do basically thin provisioning so you're okay. virtualizing the size of these of these logical volumes anyway right and so we're able to depending on what the hardware compression we're actually getting because that's that's very workload dependent right sure um, and so maybe with a, an Oracle workload we can get about maybe two to one in this in this hardware compression block sure and so we're able to to vary the size of the amount of pool space that's available for our customer to allocate. Okay. And so that's how we manage it. I right. mean, there are many ways to do it. That's 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 the choice. I we wish took. we had one of these to, to look at. I think we have one over what? there, don't oh, you? Look at look at that. Wow. So here is the actual device. So I, I'll hold it this I'll hold it this way so we can right. just get a good shot of so it. So over here is the SAS interface. Um, right. And and so you'll notice that this is not really a standard form factor. Right. Um, one of the things we found out, and I think you know, we and some other large three-letter vendors found out that form factor really doesn't matter in this flash space. Sure. We're only tied to that, that standard hard drive form factor because we did that for hard drives. Right. In our case, we have control of our environment, and so we said, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll make it as, as efficient for what we needed to do. So here's the, 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 the ASIC, the, we called it the Ashigara ASIC um, in the original version, um, underneath this heat sink, and then we have these dim modules that are populated with various uh, amounts of flash. So that okay. we, we actually, today we have three uh, capacity models of this. Uh, uh, 1.7 terabyte, a 3.5 terabyte, and a 7 terabyte version. Okay. We have a, you know, the, the march to larger uh, capacity units is, is out there, and so you'll probably hear maybe fairly soon about a 14 terabyte okay. unit of this. But, and so we're able to you know, have efficiency in manufacturing by populating these devices with the, with the different size DIMMs. Okay, well great. Well Matt, thanks for joining us today. Thanks a lot. Appreciate the walkthrough on the flash module drive. Thanks. So I, I think that's an important thing to consider when we're looking at flash technology is that it doesn't all have to look like a hard drive. Look for manufacturers who are taking advantage of what flash can do and make sure that they're optimizing it for the best possible use case. I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland. Thank you for joining us.